Hey everyone, this is John, and today I'd like to talk a little bit about where I am and how I got here. Hope you enjoy it. An individual whom I respect very much once told me, and I'm paraphrasing here, that we are sure people can't afford to improvise. There are too many health risks at stake to change a plan once it's been set. Maybe you're just going to the store at the end of the block to get some groceries. Maybe you're going on a week-long cross-country vacation. Maybe you're just trying to have a quiet, productive day at home. Regardless of what you're doing, you need to know how to react when a crisis occurs, and then will occur. An overnight ventilator could malfunction. I could have an appointment that would require me to be out on a really cold day. Or maybe my PA just might not show up without any warning. These are very real possibilities that could spontaneously occur on any given day. Now try adding another complication to the mix. Imagine if the people who had taken care of me my whole life were suddenly unavailable to help me get out of those tricky last minute pines. This is what happened to me three years ago when I decided to move away from my home and my parents. This was a choice I made. So why did I take such a crazy risk? Well, as some of you probably know from my previous videos, I have a great relationship with my parents. So I, obviously that wasn't the problem. So I would say it mainly came down to two things. I didn't see myself having a prosperous future living in my Indiana hometown. But I did have that potential in Chicago. And a rare opportunity to do just that had presented itself to me. <clears throat> so let me back up a little. I grew up in Wheatfield, Indiana. It's not well known because there isn't really anything to know it by. Aside from farmland, I guess. Uh, I was well taken care of. But I felt unfulfilled. You see, Wheatfield is a very rural area. So it doesn't really have a public transit system. There are hardly any job opportunities outside of retail and agriculture, neither of which are viable options for someone like me. Uh, and finally, I didn't qualify for personal assistance services yeah. under Indiana state law. But yeah, you heard me right. Indiana only provides funding to people with debilitating injuries and individuals with severe congenital developmental disabilities. Keyword developmental. Long story short, under federal law, SMA is a developmental disability, but under Indiana state law it isn't. So ultimately, despite a great deal of arguing with rehab counselors and multiple appeals, I was denied services. This is a huge blow to my morale. But it was around this time that a big opportunity fell into my lap. One of my good friends from college, who also happened to be a personal assistant, Zach, uh, had just lost his apartment in a fire and was looking for a new place to stay as well as a new set of roommates to live with. He wanted to know if I'd like to move into whatever place he would eventually find. As exciting as it sounded, I had a lot to figure out. We needed to find a house that could be easily modified to accommodate my needs. It took some searching and a really big aluminum lamp but eventually we were able to find something that was both affordable and comfortable. 
Uh, next, I had to apply for personal care services. Uh, and I had to figure out how I would be cared for while I was searching for a more long-term staff. So my other roommate, Jeff, who was a friend of Zach's and had also worked for me previously, uh, he was a big help in the early going. Um, and, and even though I've made a few more hires since moving here, he's still my primary caregiver to this day. Uh, another big challenge was finding everything I needed outside the home. I had to change my residency and insurance provider, I'll find new doctors, specialists, wheelchair technicians. I had to register for SSI, food stamps. Um, but amongst all of this, I think the biggest hurdle was just learning to be responsible and hold myself accountable for whatever state I found myself in. Now, eventually it did happen, but none of it came easy. I had a lot of sleepless nights, arguments with caretakers, and difficult to handle emergency situations. Many times I felt like I couldn't take it anymore. And my only option was to just move back to my Wheatfield home. At least there I didn't have to be responsible in order to be healthy. I was only able to learn how to deal with these things by forcing myself to deal with them on the spot. In short, I learned to improvise because I never could have prepared myself enough for all the challenges I faced beforehand. I just kept pushing. And I'm glad I did because I love it here. I have so many more opportunities, so much more freedom, and I have a great Chicago family, in addition to a great Wheatfield family, who I still love and visit and keep in touch with regularly. So that's basically how I got to where I am now. I had a lot of luck and a lot of good people supporting me, but I also didn't back down when things got tough. Seeking independence is a subject that I might re-examine in the future videos because I think it's important for personal development, especially for people with disabilities. And even though moving and living on a self-managed assistant schedule isn't practical for everyone with a disability, there are areas all of us can work on to become more independent. I'm curious to know your thoughts on the topic. Take a moment to consider what steps you've taken toward greater independence and how it's made you feel to reach those goals. When haven't your plans worked out exactly the way you expected? When have you had to improvise to avoid a crisis? Think about it. But in the meantime, I hope you enjoy our time together. Until next time, this is John signing out.